Hello, seven standard. Have a good day. Have a nice day. I hope you are doing well. And again, we are resuming online classes, and we start with the third term portion. First, summer sheet part textbook that is to be given summer sheet with the unit five animals in daily life. The name of the lesson is Animals in Daily Life, Chapter Five. That is Unit Five, and we continue this online class as Video Number Twenty Five. This is our third term, first lesson. Right? We have two more lessons for the third term that we will do one by one. Right? And unlike last time, we don't miss any videos. So please go through the video with the full confidence and interest. And as we all have met once recently, now I remember for second term we met each other there. Yeah? So I know you, you know me. Accordingly, we will prepare for the test. We shall do this. Yeah? And then, first I am going to survey. I wish you all a very happy New Year 2022. Let us all free from this corona and Omicron virus, and let us have a cheerful, prospective 2022 with the disease-free year. Let us all pray to the Lord. Okay. So now we will continue the lesson unit five, animals in daily life, third term portion, subject book. It is as video twenty five. Okay. First, animals. We know these are all living things. Okay, and animals in daily life. What does it mean? What is the uh, meaning of the heading of the lesson? Animals in daily life. Animals are helpful to us. We are in close association with the animals in different way. Right. And some of the animals we use as pet animals, and some of them we are interested to observe these animals as wild animals found in zoo and park. Is it not? Biological park, zoo, as uh, wild animals, and some of them they are used as food. Some of them they are used in clothing. I hope you understand. The close association with these animals in our daily life, as food, clothing, and for nature's interest, we observe or we have animals as domestic animals or pet animals, and uh, wild animals found in zoological park or wildlife sanctuary. We have heard, is it not? And that wildlife sanctuary and. Uh, In the forest, okay. So now these animals, first they are useful to us in many ways. First, as useful in food, used as food. Food, na first we take it as like that of plants in daily life that we studied in last year, six standard, is it not? The same way this year we are learning animals in daily life, right? So now these animals are used as food, and sources of food. First, it is hmm. First, sources of food. Animal as sources of food. What are as milk? Milk it is as dairy products. Milk as dairy products, and then milk as dairy products, and then uh, eggs, and then honey, eggs and honey. Okay. Now these milk as dairy products, what are all included? As, ah, uh, milk, curd, paneer. Butter, cheese, and cream. Is it not? So these are all products of dairy milk. Dairy products. What do we say? Milk as curd, 
buttermilk, cheese, paneer, ghee, ah, and creams. These are all as milk products, right? And these eggs, we obtain eggs from different animals as hen, turkey, oh yeah, think and tell me, as a eggs. And then honey from honey bees. I hope you are following. Huh? So now you please have the PDF. If you are given the textbook, well and good. Whenever you attend biology review, you please have a textbook or PDF that is to be sent and uh, a notebook for that. You can have it as a classwork note. That itself you can take teaching notes. As we are doing on the unruled side, we write with a pencil, no? Like that, for this term, you please start writing. When we meet again, we will discuss. I hope you understand. Hmm? So now, we say plants in daily life, like that, animals are also useful in our daily life. Chere? So animals are closely associated with the human in their daily life and they are they said they are gift of nature. Animals are useful in any way and every way. Right? And they are of great economic importance to our nation. Because it maintains the food chain. Last year I hope you have learned that food chain. Plants are the primary producers that are consumed by primary consumer, enter secondary consumer and tertiary consumer finally as decomposes. I hope you recollect that anyway next lesson we will learn, we will go in detail. Okay. So animals contribute many things for our use as food, clothing and transportation. What are the uh, association as food, animal as food, clothing, food, sorry, clothing and Transportation. What for transportation? What do we know? Transportation. Bullock card But still, we have it as Bullock card transportation and Bullock card with the horse. Yes, we use animals as Bullock card and then the horse. Yeah, and donkey used to carry the clothes for washing. That dobi chunule mannan. He takes this donkey and that carries clothes for washing. Okay, so transportation animals are useful as bullock cart, horse, donkey, and then in paddy field the plowing. Nowadays, so many. Modern machine tools have come, but still old traditional method of plowing the field is with the help of these bullets. I hope you recollect this. Eh? So that is for food that we are going to do it. Clothing as say cotton, silk and wool. These are all playing a major role in clothing and transportation. I hope you understand the sentence. Can you? Shall I go to the next? Right. Now, we learn how important are these animals to us and how have we to protect them. That we have to follow it. Shall I? Then, animals, animal products as food. First first the milk. Now, milk is a liquid food. White in color, produced by mammary glands of the mammals. Normally, these uh, mammals or animals which give birth to young ones. Nama Pachipmulya, viviparous animal. Reproduction, viviparous animals. I hope you remember. We too have prepared the activity. Yes or no? Egg laying animals, oviparous and uh, uh, sorry, animals which give birth to young ones, they are viviparous animals. We have prepared chart pasting the pictures of these animals, is it not? So these viviparous animals have 
mammary gland which is meant for feeding the young ones okay so those milk is also utilized by human also human being right so milk is a white liquid food produced by mammary glands of mammals it is the primary source of nutrition for infant mammals infant na poranda kolangal the newborn baby till 1 to 2 years of age mother will feed milk you know so that is infant mammals okay then we also use milk in different way as essential product which is obtained from animal as cows buffalo goat and camel what are animals can you say cows buffalo goat and camels shall i repeat cow buffalo goat and camel shall i repeat cows buffalo goat and camel shall i then milk is necessary in our daily life to prepare tea coffee ice cream chocolate sweets and other related products in a sort of the in our daily diet we use milk as what tea to prepare tea coffee ice cream chocolate sweets and other related products milk sweets use for all for that uptake right then highly recommended nutritive food containing protein and calcium highly recommended nutritive food containing protein and calcium are made from milk in along paneer cheese cream butter ghee and curd what are the items paneer cheese cream butter ghee and curd i hope you are listening hmm? so these are the nutritive food containing protein and calcium nutritive food containing protein and calcium chare so these are highly recommended food containing protein and calcium in the milk i hope you understand hmm? so this is for milk as a source of food i hope you are able to follow this huh? then <coughs> following this uh, video session 25 we have a powerpoint presentation picture presentation so that you will understand still better that we will as usual as i continue as uh, <coughs> continuation of the lesson we will do this which one we are doing Uh, animals in daily life first as a hmm first as milk as a food sources i hope you follow enala marcho milk is a white liquid food produced by mammary glands of the mammals mammals are the viviparous animals giving birth to young ones and these mammals will feed the infant infant means newborn baby up to age of 2 2 years the mother mammal will feed on the young ones okay and then it is the primary source of nutrition for infant then we use milk in our daily life first as a essential product which is obtained from cow buffalo goat and camel i hope you understand hmm? and then it is necessary in our daily diet to prepare tea coffee ice cream chocolates sweets and other related products the my cadbury chocolate and so on all for all that this milk sweet is sorry this milk is utilized and milk sweet we eat is it not so for all this milk is used in our diet then highly recommended nutritive value of protein and calcium it is also present in the milk and it is present as mainly used in the form of paneer cheese butter cream ghee and curd 
I hope you understand. Hmm? The next one, eggs. What do we know? Eggs are the, again, having very high nutritive value and it is mainly rich in protein. Eggs are highly rich in protein. Okay. And normally these eggs, uh, usually these uh, animals, egg laying animals, egg laying animals are hen, duck, turkey and ostrich. What are all? Hen, duck, turkey and ostrich. These are all egg laying animals. Right. And normally this uh, hen we come across as egg laying animals or egg layers and broilers. Egg laying and broiler chicken chalala. Abhi broiler chicken na. The urucha kori chalala. The the skin is peeled up and then supplied uh, applied with the masala and then it will be uh, what is that arranged on a stick that will be placed in all these roadside shops here yeah? chicken masala that is broiler chicken okay like that this uh, hand they are as egg layers and broilers okay? so now these egg laying animals are I repeat it. Hmm. Hen, duck, turkey and ostrich. I hope you understand. Hmm? Now how will you use it in our daily life? These hens are that now we are talking about eggs. Okay. How are we using it as used in our daily life to get energy and good health? Eggs are used in our daily life to get <coughs> energy and good health okay? and it is highly nutritious and rich in protein eggs are highly nutritious and rich in protein normally when we talk about hen's egg the white of the egg is when the egg is egg is covered by a hard shell is it not so when the egg is broken what can you say when the egg is broken it will be having some liquid white portion that is called yolk of the egg and that yolk will contain rich nutritious protein so that will be having very rich nutritious protein i hope you understand so this is first good health highly nutritious and rich in protein the eggs have 6 grams of high quality protein. Eggs have 6 grams of high quality protein. And a protein packed breakfast helps to sustain mental and physical energy throughout the day. Normally, the non veg people and they, they will just eat one egg and a cup of milk and come to the uh, come to their workstation, is it not? That is called sumptuous food. In a wire full that is sumptuous food, right? So the egg is that much energy packed breakfast. And consuming egg daily is good for any age group of people. I hope you understand this. Hmm? So again, eggs are laid by female birds of many different species to produce their young one and what are the types of uh, birds we come across hen, duck, hen, duck, turkey and ostrich I repeat hen, duck, turkey and ostrich right now what are the uses we say they are used in our daily life to get good energy and health they are highly nutritious and rich in protein and eggs have 6 grams of high quality protein and uh, protein packed in breakfast helps to sustain a mental and physical energy throughout the day so consuming eggs can be consumed by any age group of people so that is for egg okay just go through the portion Go through the portion, page 83 in a textbook. Textbook if we have, we follow on PDF. Go through that.
Can you? Yes or no? Mm. Now, if you are given an egg, I am, I am, I am, when I give an egg, if you are given an egg, how will you say that it is a fresh one or the old one? Hmm? If you are given an egg, how will you say that it is a fresh one or the old one? For that, you can test. You take a cup of water. Okay? You take a cup of water. It's to hold the water. Sorry. You take a cup of water. Right? In that, you produce a, you just the place the egg that is given to you. In a cup of water, you place the egg given to you. I am giving two eggs. Okay? You place the egg that is given to you in water. Chale? If the eggs are fresh, it will sink at the bottom. If the fresh eggs are there, it will sink at the bottom. And if the egg is rotten, it will float on the surface of water. I hope you understand. Hmm? So this is an activity to test the presence of, sorry, to test the freshness of the egg that is given to you. What are we to do? You take a bowl of water, then uh, place the given eggs on the water. If the eggs are fresh one, it will sink at the bottom. If the eggs are rotten, it will float on the surface of the water. I hope you understand. Hmm? So this is for eggs. The next one is honey. What do we know? Honey is obtained from honey bee. Honey is obtained from honey bees. What do we know? Honey bees are honey bees are three types. Honey bees are three types as first queen bee, queen bee drone and worker bee. Honey bee, they are of three types, queen bee, drone and worker bee. Chure? In that, the honey bee is built on a beehive. It is on a beehive. Tengura chalula. Now when you learn this lesson, this picture will be on the video monitor. Video sprinkler. Okay. And after continuation of this we have picture presentation in that you can still understand better for beehive or honey bee. Chale? So now this beehive will have honey. Now how, are, how is this honey formed? Honey is formed. What can you say? Honey is formed by collecting nectar from the flower. I hope you remember that. Honey is collected from the nectar from the flower by the honey bees. Now this flower, as we know, <coughs> hmm, as we know, this is the structure of a stamen in a flower. Structure of a stamen in a flower as anther and stalk called filament. And this will have pollen grain. This will have pollen grain. Okay. So in the given flower, there are four whorls as calyx sepals. I am sorry. Calyx formed of sepals. Corolla formed of petals. Andesium formed of stamens. Main part of the flower and gynesium formed of pistil, female part of the flower. Okay. Now this 
helix and corolla they are as accessory valve or non essential valve and amnesium and gynesium are the essential valves of the flower i hope you are listening huh? in that that amnesium the structure it is formed of stamens and that stamen will have a cap like structure called anther which contain the main gamete pollen grain and the stamen will have a stalk called filament i hope you can recollect the structure of a flower this year we have done a practical high viscous dissection no i hope you remember that recollect that point hmm? so this is stamen and gym main part of the flower now this pollen grain it is sticky in nature sticky na vitotta otto right sticky in nature which is having nectar okay which is having nectar and that nectar is collected by the bees that is honey i hope you follow hmm? now in a given flower again one minute this is distill and the sorry this is stem now over the flower diagram so this is stem okay now when the honey bees <coughs> or for that matter any insects sit on the flower it looks for pollen grain okay and that pollen grain will contain nectar and that is actually food of the insects i hope you are listening hmm? and this honey bee will collect that nectar and they they build a structure called a hive hive na kood so that bee hive tain good matla katnalya that full of honey only honey only okay this bee hive it is formed of numerous hexagonal cell hexo hexo sorry hexagonal cells hexagonal six that cells are formed in like this hexagonal cells six is the 1 2 3 4 5 6 so the hexagonal cells are the bee hive and that will be storing the honey collected by the honey bees i hope you follow huh? and that honey bee honey obtained from the pollen grain just now i said is it not now we come across a term pasturage as the flower with the amnesium will contain a very considerable amount of pollen and nectar okay and that nectar when it is taken by one insect or one honey bee then the amount of pollen will be reduced a decrease is it not so immediately when the next insect this is the flower then availability of pollen with the nectar is not possible so that is mainly as pasturage okay so pasturage we come across a term not given in our textbook just understand which is availability of the pollen grain and the nectar in the pollen grain for the honey bees or any other insect to take the nectar i hope you understand hmm? and these insects they nectar otherwise these insects suck nectar by proboscis these insects suck nectar by proboscis i hope you follow hmm? so that proboscis what do we say this is butterfly here or any insects that you say this is proboscis in the help of which so we continue this uh, honey as a proposis by the insects suck nectar from the given flower 
Same way, honey, honey bees also will collect nectar from the flower. And uh, depending on the availability of the nectar in a given flower for the bees, it is called pasturage. I hope you remember this. Huh? This is called pasturage. It's not given in a textbook. Just understand. Okay. Then these uh, honey bees, as I said, queen bee, drone bee, and worker bee were in a given beehive. About hundreds of bees are there. But in that only one queen bee meant for laying eggs. And others for mating drone bee. And all others are sterile bee. They are the worker bee. They are meant for cleaning the hive, collecting nectar from the flower. Like that different uses of honey, uh, uh, beehive, uh, sorry, helpful activities of uh, worker bee are given. I hope you follow this. Huh? So that is for honey bee and that collects nectar and make it as a honey. And this honey is very highly nutritious and it is having many medicinal properties. It has many medicinal properties. And again nowadays these honey bees there are many adulteration we say no kalapadam. And that adulteration should be avoided. And to test the honey whether it is pure or not. Otherwise we say the purity of the honey is tested as again you take a glass of water and a spoon of honey. Right? And if the honey is pure, it will settle at the bottom. If the honey is impure, if the honey is not pure, it will dissolve in water. I hope you follow. Huh? That is to test the purity of honey. Are you clear? Huh? Now you just understand and take uh, activity 3. <coughs> activity 3. To find out the purity of honey, materials required, water and honey, procedure, take a glass of water, add a drop of honey to it, absorb carefully. If the drop of honey reaches the bottom without dissolving, then the honey is pure. If it drop of honey dissolves before it reaches the bottom, then the honey is not pure, it is impure. I hope you follow. Hmm? Then honey, where, the, where from honey comes and how it is produced. You know? And you have seen behind where many bees are buzzing out. You know? We hear the noise, no? that buzzing sound. And bees collect nectar, which is sweet juice from the flowers. And it converts it into honey and store in their honeycomb. Honeycomb the behind. Right? Then honey is sweet liquid produced by honey bees. From the nectar of the flower and it is extracted from the bees by us. Right? Then raw organic wild honey is extracted from selected variety of beehive by tribal honey hunters. This Malay, the Malay Tenchugala, those people, those people living there can extract honey from the beehive in forest. That is called Malaitin and, uh, and who collect it from jungles. Then honey has more medicinal value and highly nutritious food. I hope you follow. Hmm? You just go through honey paragraph. Go through and understand. Two minutes I will give honey to follow. Go through. Can you? First to go through line by line. Honey, where does it come from? What is behind? What is honeycomb? Honeycomb are hexagonal cells. I have drawn on the board, no? Hexagonal cells. Hexagonal, no? It has six space. Six space. The size they have, no? That is called hexagonal phase. Can 
step by step we understand then go for uses what are the types of honey bees queen bee drone bee worker bee have you gone through How purity of honey is tested? The diet is three. Please go through. Purity of honey. How is it tested? Just go through. Can it? Form. Then the worker bees. Do you know in the sea? The worker bees collect the nectar from the flowers. <coughs> they nourish the young one and repair the beehive and also protect it. Function of honey bee. They nourish the young one and repair the beehive and also protect it. Okay. So the worker bee collect the nectar from the flowers. They nourish the young one and repair the beehive and also protect it. I hope you follow this. Huh? So this is for honey. Okay. So now it's so far we have done animals in daily life. We have just started the first point as source of food. Normally animals are used in our daily life as food, clothing and transportation. Okay. In that we have done first part as food. <coughs> then as uh, <coughs> we have about milk we have done as uh, dairy products and then egg as uh, egg layers and then we test the whether the eggs are fresh one or not that is for uh, taking the given eggs in a cup of water, when the eggs are placed in water, if it floats, it is a northern one, if it sinks at the bottom, it is a fresh one, right. The next is honey, honey bees are queen bee, drone bee, worker bee and these collect nectar from the flowers and these nectar are present in the pollen grain which is a male gamut present in the stamen. So, you just recollect the four words of the flower that we have learnt in practicals. Calyx formed of sepals, corolla formed of petals, andesium is the main part of the flower formed of stamen which has anther which contains pollen grain and the stalk called filament. I hope you are remembering this. Hmm? And then uh, <coughs> Gynesium is the female part of the flower which has pistil, has basal, swollen, ovary, long style, ending in stigma. Okay. And then about the behind, it is called honeycomb. The hexagonal cells are called honeycomb. That we have it in the next video session. The continuation of this lesson that we have as a PowerPoint presentation or picture presentation. I hope you understand. Huh? Now you take page <coughs> chapter unit 5 animals in daily life. You take this activity in the PDF or uh, textbook if it is given to you. Take this activity 1. Now note down with the pencil. Activity 1 note down with the pencil. Are you ready? Note down with the pencil. Where we, where we have column, not only the pencil, where we have column, serial number, food item, 
ingredients and sources. Serial number, food item, ingredients and sources. That it first fill up. First one, it is chicken. It is an animal source that is given to us. Chicken, animal source. Okay. Then next is spices. Spices na that cardamom, clove, kasa kasa. I hope you know that. Huh? Brinji. These are all spices and they are plant sources. Right as plant. Spices, plant. Then oil, it is plant. Oil seeds from oil seeds as groundnut. I hope you understand this. Huh? Then ginger oil from sesame na yell. Sesame oil or yell. Nalla nai chalamle that is. And then groundnut oil we know. So oil is obtained from plant. And the ghee is from animals. Ghee is the milk product. Milk is obtained from the animals. Is it not? So, oil, plant product. Ghee, animal product. So, you write it as plant, then animal. I hope you follow. Are you writing down? Sure. The next step. Korean curry leaf, plant sauce. Curry leaf, plant sauce. Plant sauce. Coriander. Plant sauce. The food item is given here with the chicken. See the chicken figure is given. I hope you are listening. Huh? With that, these are the ingredients and sources. For this figure only, chicken only, we are writing. This plant sources. Ingredient and the sources. What are ingredients? The content of the Food item in the given food. That is ingredient. The next one, fish. Fish and the animal. Again, spices, plant. Oil, ghee, plant, animal. Lemon, plant. Chicken, little food item. I don't know what is it. You may be doing it, seeing it with the color picture. No? Just to understand. Fish, animal. Spices, plant. Oil ghee plant animal. Oil and the plant ghee animals. Lemon plants. The next one as tea milk. It's a tea and tea or coffee. Some uh, drinks. So milk animal source. Tea leaf or it is a coffee na coffee nut. Coffee potential coffee seed. They are plant sources. Then water. <coughs> water as water the as water source. Then sugar, actually, it may be from sugar cane. So plant source. Okay. Sugar from plant source. I hope you understand. Hmm? Then next item. Some food item. Color picture than another I can follow this. Please understand. The picture in a textbook. First, oil or ghee that is prepared, plant and animal, sugar gandhi, sugar sauce, milk animal, nuts and the cashew nut, bada, pista, they are plant sources. Then, flavor, accordingly, we use strawberry powder flavor or vanilla flavor, chocolate flavor, you know, that is. And honey is a plant source, rice plant source, egg birds animal source. <coughs> okay. Then again, spice of plant, oil and the plant sources, coriander leaf and the plant source. I hope you understand. Hmm? So you have to fill this page with the plant and animal sources. So now I have given this only black and white diagram. But when you see a textbook, it is the pictures are given, the food items are given in color accordingly. You just understand and identify what type of food it is. Then you write it as plant source and animal sources. What are the ingredients? And then plant source and animal sources. Just see whether you have filled up the color. Yeah. 
Let's check it. Fill up the column. Can you? Hmm? So this is some of the food items given below. And we are writing the ingredient and the sources. I hope you follow this. Huh? So we are writing ingredient and the, <coughs> and the sources. Are you clear? Hmm? So this is for, so far the portions for video 25 we have covered. I hope you understand. Hmm? And we just continue with the few picture presentation. Then we, this is for video number 25. And we will continue in the next video session. Have a nice day. Go through the lesson. Unlike last time, don't miss any video. And those who are, when you are receiving the videos, please download it and save it. That's what I heard from the school when we are there for second time. Okay. So whenever the link is given, download it and store it in separate uh, file so that we can use it for future planning. I hope you understand because when we met second term, some of you don't have the link. So please now understand, you have to download the link and save it. I hope you follow. Huh? As biology video 25, save like that. Are you clear? Same way, what are all is sent, please download and save. That is what I was told by the people in charge for sending this video links. I hope you understand. Hmm? Just go through. We will continue in the next video session. Have a good day. Thank you. Hello, 7th standard. This is our video number 25 continuation that we are doing animals in daily life part 1. Okay. Now this lesson as I explained in uh, whiteboard uh, detail this is continuation of our picture presentation. You just see first what is given in the picture is a goat with the full of fur skin we say no outer skin that is full of fur. Okay. It is actually a foreign breed. I hope you follow this. So it is said animals are closely associated with the human being in their daily life. They are the greatest gift of nature. They are of great economic importance to our nation and animals contribute many things for use as food, clothing and transportation. And as he said, food regarding that, what we have learned, what is it? As food with the... Hmm, milk as a dairy product and then as uh, uh, egg we have learnt it as egg laying animal and uh, broiler okay so this lesson we are doing as to know animals used as food and for making clothes and we are learning about how wool and silk is produced then to understand the hazards of silk and wool in Industries or silk and wool, wool industries and learn how to avoid it. That hazardous should be removed. So how to avoid it that we are learning in that lesson and to gain knowledge about Ahimsa. Okay. Now this Ahimsa it is also known as peace silk. Then to understand the importance of animal protection and their importance. Now this is the content of our lesson. Otherwise we say at the end of the lesson these are the outcome as food for making clothes and this okay now this one as i said uh, eggs we are using yeah so eggs as food which is of highly nutritive value to find the eggs whether it is of uh, a fresh one or not as i said earlier again you take a glass tumbler with, uh, water with the <clears throat> water in a glass tumbler or bowl of water as we call and place the given two eggs into that and the fresh one will sink sink now going at the bottom the fresh one will sink and uh, rotten eggs will be floating in water so this is an activity that we are doing for get distinguishing hmm, fresh egg from the rotten one this is activity two so first you take a bowl of water, put the egg in the bowl 
and when you observe it fresh egg fresh egg will sink and the rotten one rotten egg will float in water just mm -hmm. go through this experiment this is for egg and the nutritive values of eggs as mm -hmm. we said it is very rich in protein and eggs have 6 grams of high quality protein in a sense a protein packed breakfast helps to sustain mental and physical energy so it is said consuming egg daily is good for any group of age right any age people the uh, eggs can be taken and that is for okay Chari? so again we say eggs are laid by female birds the examples of these are uh, hen duck turkey and ostrich i repeat hen duck turkey and ostrich this is for egg laying birds otherwise we say egg laying and broiler chicken chalonle broiler na the skin will be removed and then masala put in the road side, road side shop like they are kept now that is i hope you follow this hmm? so now go through this experiment just for a second we'll continue just a second <coughs> okay this is how to distinguish fresh egg from the rotten one actually it is an activity those who are eating now with those who are eating egg you can try this experiment try this activity just have a try okay and those who are doing you please make a note in your biology classwork as i said copy it as it is in the uh, given in activity 2 page 83 in our textbook those who are eating only not all those who are eating egg you can do this experiment do this activity and note down in the classwork note I hope you understand right so other than that first we have learnt us milk and dairy milk purchase dairy product okay the next one what you are saying is honey honey again it is of great importance where it is a sweet liquid produced by honey bees from the nectar of flowers this nectar of flower here you should remember the word pasturage pasturage is a term which is applied to the availability of the pollen in a given flower as i said the flower the pollen <laughs> grain will be taken by the honey uh, honey bee and then suppose immediately when the uh, next honey bee is sitting on the flower now that pollen will not be available is it not so that is called pasturage pasturage is a term applied for the availability of the pollen grain for honey Chariya. so we say honey from where it comes how is it produced in our textbook okay so we use the term beehive or honeycomb so bees collect nectar sweet juices from flowers convert it into honey and store in their honeycomb i repeat bees collect nectar sweet that is a sweet juice from flowers convert it into honey and store it in their honeycomb okay and it is a sweet liquid produced by honeybee again nectar of the flower what i said stamens are the male part of the flower again it is a andresium stamens are the male part of the flower which contain pollen grain and the raw, raw organic wild honey is extracted from selective selected hive by tribal honey hunters in the forest or jungle nama near by the manjolai forest chalonle kodayar dam illa angalla the honey malai ten chalwa that can be taken okay and this honey can be tested for its purity whether the honey is pure or not it can be tested for that you take a glass tumbler of water and then you just add a drop of honey into the <coughs> glass tumbler with the water and if the drop of honey reaches the bottom without dissolving then the honey is said to be pure if the drop of honey dissolves before it reaches the bottom then the honey is not pure Chariya. then the figure what is seen what you are giving is called beehive 
that is behind so that below button yellow color these are all the hexagonal cells and the ten kudin solonlia that is hexagonal cell honeycomb hexagonal cell the sutti than the male of the honey nariya honey bees are the cover paneer okay so the figure you should understand honey is oozing out from the hexagonal cells first figure on the beehive beehive than the honeycomb the maripkid are clear and the maripicture but at the chutti nare honey bees are there okay so this is a picture explaining hexagonal cells of honeycomb and then the honey bee honey is oozing out from the honeycomb and the experiment what we are saying for the activity that we call is activity 3 this also with the help of your parent you just try if you, you get a honey for any purpose at home for cooking or any uh, food item you will prepare no for that you just uh, take it and then uh, test it for purity of the honey that activity also you please do it at home with the help of your parents and note down like this in your class work note this everybody can do it activity 3 the whole seventh standard should do that okay first one activity testing the fresh one of the egg when the, those who are eating egg will do that activity and note down in your class work note Chariya? class work note le, fresh page edutu. after second term question answers take fresh page write third term unit 5 animals in daily life put it unruled on unruled side we will do this activity write with the pencil draw the diagram and submit okay then about the bee, honey bees there are three types as i said it is queen bee drone bee and worker bee in a honey in a beehive there will be only one queen bee and drone bee and worker bee drone bee are actually they are the male honey bee and the worker bee they are sterile honey sterile honey bees they are meant for collecting nectar from the flowers they nourish the young one and repair the beehive and also <coughs> and also the beehive wish to protect it and also beehive to protect it one minute uh, beehive to protect it okay so this is the worker bee and then it is as uh, diseases that we have uh, as i said these uh, birds are meant for egg laying and uh, broiler children yeah? broiler chicken and egg layers and these eggs sorry these birds are maintained in a form that is called poultry farming this poultry farming we are continuing in the next video number 26 okay but still understand what you are seeing in the picture is a poultry farm it is it should have good ventilation species and a good feed for the hen poultry birds okay so the uh, sufficient space na the wired gadgets na irukum the nariya kambi kambiya tatta tatta irukum la that is okay then sometime if the poultry farming it requires safe uh, sufficient space so if it is not so then you should have it safely and then poultry feed should be followed i hope you understand hmm? so this is <coughs> for our diseases poultry diseases we will continue in the next video session as video number 26 i hope you have followed up to this thank you